Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to focus on all the things that they do not tell you before you go and get your hair relaxed or chemically straightened. So before we get started on all of these tips that I feel they don't tell you before you get your hair relaxed, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Dominique.Baker. I'm going to start sharing on Instagram hair tips and things like that because you guys have asked for that repeatedly. And it's a great way to see what I love fashion and beauty wise. Um, you know, there's a lot of great Instagrammers out there, especially black Instagrammers. I'm very inspired by a lot of them and I want to inspire you guys too. So feel free to follow along. I would love that. So I've been relaxing my hair as you guys already know for years and years, like a really, really long time. And I was not perfect with my hair care when I first got my hair relaxed because frankly, I didn't know what I was doing. So as the years progressed and I really started to find out things that worked for me, um, my hair grew and its health thrived. So I wanna share these tips with you guys so that you guys can experience the same rate of growth and hair health. You have to put the moisture back into your hair. So deep conditioning your hair once a week with thick, rich, deep conditioners or hair masks is an absolute must. You will totally notice a difference in your hair health. Your hair will be shinier, stronger, and softer. And if your hair is softer, it's easier to manipulate, okay, instead of fighting with it to get it detangled or whatever. So on top of deep conditioning, you have to moisturize the ends of your hair also to keep them soft and healthy. If your hair is really damaged or you've been coloring your hair or bleaching your hair, sorry, you can't get your hair relaxed. Hair relaxing is a really tough process on your hair. It, it basically breaks down the protein bonds of your hair to achieve that straight look. So if your hair is already damaged or if your hair is colored or bleached, that process, your hair has already been broken down. And if you add a relaxer on top of that, you will go bald. It's just too harsh. Your hair is not strong enough to withstand all of those processes layered one on top of the other. So you'll either have to grow out your colored or bleach hair and then relax your natural hair or just forgo the process whatsoever. Okay, another tip I learned is that when you relax your hair, you will experience some scalp dryness and overall hair dryness. Like I said, it's a very tough process and you need to get into the habit of tr babying your hair. Relaxed hair is not necessarily strong or resilient, so you really need to be diligent about moisturizing your hair and keeping it as strong as can be. Which which leads into my next tip. When you have relaxed hair, deep conditioning your hair is your best friend. It is your top defense against breakage, shedding, and dryness. Well, dryness leads to the breakage and shedding. So, to keep them soft and healthy, okay? So, every night before bed, you take a little oil or some sort of moisturizer and put it on the ends. I wouldn't necessarily put it all over your hair every single day because then your hair will get really greasy and tacky and weighed down and then styling is just a non-starter, but every night on your ends. So every night before bed, I put a little moisturizer or oil on my ends and that has really been a game changer for me. So this leads into my next step. Over manipulation of your hair will break your hair. Your hair will not grow if you're constantly playing with it and flicking it and fighting with it to get it detangled. It will break. So I wear my hair down when I'm going to events or when I'm doing YouTube videos just so that you guys can see what it looks like. Otherwise, it's always in a bun or it's always tied up. It's off my shoulders. It's not rubbing up against my clothes or my coat collar. All of those cause friction and all of those are forms of manipulation that will break your hair. Keep your hands out of your hair, no twirling your hair, no aggressive combing, none of that. Just leave your hair alone. 
So my next step is get yourself a wide tooth comb, okay? Wide tooth combs, they have the, the teeth that are set really far apart and they're really, really effective at detangling your hair without breaking it. It's common sense. If you're using a, a comb with a billion little teeth, it's just impossible to get it through your hair, especially if your hair is thick and coarse. You want to use a wide tooth comb to get out the tangles and start combing from the ends upwards. That's the most gentle way to do so, to get rid of the tangles in your hair. So when I wake up in the morning, I comb out my hair using my wide tooth comb and then I put it up and then when I go to bed, I comb out my hair again to get rid of any tangles and I do so slowly and gently, I take my time, put a little oil on the ends, and then I go to bed. Next, go to bed. Next tip, right before I go to bed, I wrap my hair up in a satin or a silk scarf. The softer the scarf, the smoother the scarf, the better. Alternatively, you can use a silk or satin pillowcase, but I really like wrapping my hair personally. I think it is the better option because it's just that much less friction on your hair. If you go to bed with your hair in, let's say, a scrunchier or just loose, it's still rubbing up against your satin pillowcase. You could experience a little breakage, but not much. But why chance it? I just wrap my hair around my head and then I clip it, put the satin scarf around my hair, and then I remove the clips, boom, and then I go to bed. And when I wake up the following morning and remove the scarf, my hair looks like it's been blown out. I so, this next tip is a really important one. If you expect to have healthy, relaxed hair, you can't be using heat tools in your hair very often. I use them very, very sparingly because they sap the moisture out of your hair. It's like, really, you notice a difference. If I have a bunch of events, one after the other, and I'm using a curling iron a lot, my hair just dries out, it feels like hay. They're really, really bad for your hair. Um, okay, so another tip that I don't practice enough myself, but I would like to start is roller setting is a great option to promote healthy hair if you have relaxed hair. When you wash your hair and you put your hair in rollers, it's, and then you go under the dryer, there's less direct heat and you're not over manipulating your hair, let's say when you're blowing it out with a blow dryer and then flat ironing it, you're just putting it in rollers, sitting under the dryer, and then your hair is nice and detangled and you can, you know, comb it out and have a great look. And that really, really promotes healthy hair because it doesn't sap the moisture out of your hair as much as blow drying and flat ironing. So that's something I really want to get into. I have a lot of hair, it's long. I The thought of putting my hair into rollers is daunting, but if I want to keep the health of my hair, that's something I, I definitely want to get into. I just wish there were more hours in the day because roller setting your hair and sitting under the dryer, well, for me, it, it was like a two, three hour process. I just don't have that time. So I just want to go back to coloring your hair. It is possible to color your hair if you have a relaxer, but you really should stick to semi-permanent rinses. They are a whole lot less harsh on your hair. You can still achieve that color that... I wouldn't say you can achieve the color you want, but let's say you want to cover up grays or just have a subtle change in your color. Like, frankly, I would love to do a coffee brown. I think that might be a really really nice look for me, especially in the summer. My hair really lightens up in the summer too. And my sister has this beautiful like reddish espresso color hair and I would love to try that. It's a, a more gentle process than bleaching your hair and then putting the color back in that you want. That's a surefire way to lose all of your hair. But yeah, I think I'm gonna try that this summer and I will do a video on how that goes. But Gloria, my hairstylist, is a total pro and this is what she recommends for covering grays or achieving like a subtle color difference. So another thing that a lot of people don't seem to know about hair relaxers is that your scalp can get burned. It's a harsh chemical, it's, it's lye and lye is
is like if you were to get pure lye on your skin, it's going to burn. It's like acid. So, you know, if you have a good hairstylist, she will be watching your hair relaxer like a hawk and you will not be experiencing any burning whatsoever. But everybody's skin is different and I have a very sensitive scalp. So Gloria puts um, Vaseline or some other thick cream along my hairline and the um, nape of my neck because that's where I generally burn. I have a really sensitive skin so um, every now and then I'll get a few minor burns but it can really hurt and it can really make the process <laughs> uncomfortable. So I would, if I were you and let's say this is your first time getting a relaxer, be prepared for that. Okay, so put a little coconut oil on your scalp the night before your relaxer, that'll really help. And this leads me into my next tip. Oh my God, I have made this mistake before and oh, I'll never make it again. You cannot work out, especially doing cardio or anything that makes you sweat the day of the relaxer. That will really open up your pores and you will get the burn of your life. It is so painful. If your hairdresser knows that you have gone ahead and worked out right before relaxer, she should be turning you away because you will get vicious burns. It is horrible. Stay out of the sun the day of your relaxer. Don't go for a run. Don't do weight training. Just just take it easy the day of your relaxer and go in feeling cool, okay, and without your scalp already on fire. Frankly, I won't work out a few days before a relaxer because I'm just so paranoid. When I was 15 years old, it was a July day and I was getting my hair relaxed and I missed the bus, so I ran to the hair to my hair appointment. I didn't tell Gloria, and I got the most horrible burn of my life. She had to wash it off about 30 seconds in. She didn't even get through applying the relaxer to my whole head. I was in tears. It hurt so bad. And that was years ago. I will never make that mistake again. <laughs> I want to cry just thinking about it. So guys, I hope these tips help you. Um, they really helped me achieve the length that I have. Uh, my hair is doing really, really well. Um, guys, I don't know if you know this already. If you guys check out my Instagram, you will know, but here, I've got a little surprise for you. So for my birthday, my husband got me a puppy. <laughs> Everybody meet Reese. He is my 12 week old Bernadoodle puppy. A Bernadoodle is half Bernese Mountain Dog, half Golden Doodle. He is the nicest little dog ever. He's super, super affectionate. I also call him Hurricane Reese because he never stops moving or running. <laughs> He's totally adorable. Anyways, he broke into the room here and was making a lot of noise, so I thought I would introduce him. Say hi to the camera, Reese. Say hi. Don't fight me! <laughs> so I really hope that these tips help you guys. They really helped me achieve healthy hair. If you have any other tips, please DM me or leave them in the comments. Just like you guys, I like to learn. And don't forget to follow my Instagram at Dominique.Baker. I will be featuring more hair tips on my Instagram. A lot of you guys ask for that, so that's something I'd like to start. I also focus a lot on fashion and beauty on my Instagram account, so please feel free to follow me and see what I'm loving. Don't forget to check out my blog, styledomination.com. Anyways, bye for now, guys. I hope you like this video. Talk soon.